Okay, hi there. Welcome to another in our series of policy focus videos. Uh, we look at a particular policy and think about how it might impact on the economy. This is the first of two videos, two short videos, looking at the impact of an increase in the minimum wage. In the first one, we're going to be thinking about how it might lead to rising unemployment and evaluating that suggestion. And in the second video, we'll think about the linkages between the minimum wage and inflation. So here's our question. Uh, to what extent might a higher minimum wage cause increased unemployment? Here's the rate of unemployment for the UK all the way back to 1988. Gosh, a long time ago, well over 30 years of data here. And you can see there were two peaks of unemployment that both uh, came about as a result of a preceding recession in the early 1990s. And again, after the financial crisis of 2008 onwards. Unemployment was falling quite steadily until the pandemic, of course, hit the UK in 2020 into 2021 and the unemployment rate has started to increase. The average for last year uh, in 2020 was 4.5 percent. A quick uh, definition of course, important to know these things, a minimum wage is a legal, a statutory legal pay floor in the labour market and employers, they cannot legally pay people below a certain wage per hour. And in the UK uh, in 2021, the national minimum wage for adults, that's people over the age of 25, uh, is £8.91 an hour. Uh, this is about £1.70-ish increase since 2016. Um, and uh, you can also see that there are five minimum wage categories, uh, four of which are based on age uh, and one for apprentice workers. So the, the minimum wage is highest for adult workers over the age of 25 and lowest for apprentices. There's also a gap, by the way, a difference between the minimum wage and the living wage. You may well have come across this concept. The living wage, uh, compared to the minimum wage, is shown in this chart. Uh, by the way, this data was for spring of 2020. Of course, the minimum wage has now changed. But the living wage is a voluntary uh, pay per hour, uh, whereas paying the minimum wage is a legal requirement. As of June 2021, something like 7,000 employers in the UK, uh, they do pay a living wage. That's a wage rate quite a bit above the minimum wage. OK, so when you get a question about the extent to which a minimum wage could lead to higher unemployment, you need to be able to build an analytical chain of reasoning. There's lots of different ways you can explain it, but, but here's one. Uh, a higher minimum wage will other factors remaining the same. And of course, they won't stay the same. That's part of the evaluation. A higher minimum wage will lead to an increase in labour costs, variable costs for many businesses. And it's good to put a couple of examples in there. Think about labour intensive firms, businesses where labour is a quite a high percentage of cost, uh, tourism, hotels, restaurants, cafes, uh, transport businesses, and also, of course, in the health and social care sector. So labour costs will go up. And if a firm is unable, perhaps unwilling, to increase their prices, higher labour costs will then cause a fall in their operating profits. Uh, I think particularly small businesses might be affected by this. And this might lead some firms to reduce employment, to contract how many people they employ, uh, perhaps by replacing some labour with new technology. You might, for example, increase the rate of automation, automation in retail or in security, etc. And in this way, a higher minimum wage could could, not must, but could lead to a falling demand for labour and hence a rising unemployment rate. That's the percentage of people in the labour force who are looking for work. Uh, some, some employers may cut hours instead of jobs. They may reduce the hours that they're prepared to allow people to work. And that, of course, that, that could cause a rise in underemployment, which is a related concept. And I suppose you can use a good diagram. This, this is year 12 economics, so we can use some labour demand supply diagrams. To be effective, a minimum wage must be set above the normal minimum wage rate. Let me do that. Uh, the, ultimate, the level of the minimum wage, of course, is ultimately set by the government uh, based on the economic advice given by the Low Pay Commission. So I've imposed a minimum wage there. Now, in theory, um, minimum wage is going to cause a fall in the demand for labour. It's going to contract to E2. Uh, and also, the, oops, and also more people looking for work. The supply of labour will expand because the minimum wage is an incentive for people to find work. So labour supply may well expand. The result is you end up with an excess supply of labour shown here by the by the distance E2, E3. 
sometimes called real wage unemployment, and you can see how a minimum wage, in theory, can lead to a fall in labour demand and an increase in unemployment. However, evaluation is a critical higher order skill. Here are four evaluation points that might be worth thinking about. And of course, depends that your exam depends on how many marks the question has as to how many evaluation points you need to, to bring into the discussion. The first point is that other costs might have fallen. We drop the Keteris Parvis assumption. For example, the rents that businesses pay or the business rates might have fallen, particularly in retail, for example. Uh, the government might have cut national insurance paid by employers. So there might have been a sort of like a compensating reduction in cost to help offset a minimum wage increase. A second point relates to the demand side of the economy. It's a very Keynesian point, but a higher minimum wage can increase the total earnings, the disposable incomes of those directly affected, particularly if they keep their jobs. And if those people are, are still in work and earning more, they will spend more. And typically, low-income workers are likely to have a higher marginal propensity to consume. In other words, they will spend quite a high percentage of any extra pay they get. That's going to add to aggregate demand and potentially create new jobs in other sectors of the economy. Another point relates to the impact of the minimum wage. The minimum wage might stimulate labour productivity, workers feeling better, psychological improvements. Uh, that can then help to control unit labour costs. Employers having to pay a higher minimum wage may raise their game and improve their training schemes, again, lifting productivity. So better management can offset the impact of a minimum wage. And crucially, a really good evaluation point is one of those go-to points, isn't it? Much depends on the scale of the wage increase. I think the minimum wage in 2021 went up by 2%, just above inflation. So not a hefty, not a significant change. Certainly if the minimum wage went up by 10%, you would see quite a bit of kickback, I guess, quite a bit of impact across many different types of businesses. And the impact of the minimum wage depends not just on the scale of the change, but also on the wage elasticity of demand for labour. Let's just go back to our previous diagram where we had a minimum wage imposed. I've drawn a labour demand curve there showing employment falling from E1 to E2. But if the demand for labour is relatively wage inelastic, which you can see here, let's just contrast those again. Looking at those two labour demand curves, can you see here that the same minimum wage has a smaller impact on the number of people employed? And indeed, if employment, so if demand for goods and services goes up because of the minimum wage, people on relatively low incomes spending more, earning more and spending more, then the demand for labour might shift out from D1 to D2, in which case you can make a case for saying that a minimum wage actually, instead of reducing employment, you could end up with a higher level of employment than you had before. And of course, that would bring down the unemployment rate. Hopefully that's useful in terms of building a chain of reasoning of analysis and showing you how to evaluate. In the next video, we'll take a look at how a minimum wage could impact on the, the rate of inflation, another key macro objective. Stay curious, stay safe. Thanks for joining in this video.